Uh, welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss, and thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology <laughs> that love what they do. I have to do everything I do. Good. good. Wow, we were on. Oh, that. Wow, <laughs> we were on <laughs> that 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 way <laughs> off. <laughs> I thought you guys had turned this uh, shtick into a finely oiled machine by now. Oh, we we oh, had hey. it. We, Janelle's not here. She <laughs> does that part. I just threw off. Uh, uh, thanks, Janelle. Yeah, we <laughs> miss you, Janelle. Uh, just, quick, quick announcements just so uh, we, we get this out. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Pantheon. Pantheon.io. They have uh, all different kinds of uh, great tools for you to build a website in WordPress. Drupal 7, Drupal 8, they have uh, different environments. So if you want a development environment, a test environment, a live environment, so you could test out all your stuff before you push it up to the live site, you could do that. It comes with New Relic, Solar Server. It is a great piece of uh, stuff that I use <laughs> quite often. I run two or three, no, actually five websites on it now for a few years, and I really enjoy it. So go to pantheon.io and uh, get you a free ice cream. They're awesome. So with that being said, why don't we uh, talk about subscribing to the show? If you haven't yet, go to thundernerds.io, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, on our podcast, our Patreon channel, and uh, go to thundernerds.io slash review and provide us a review. That'd be great of you. And speaking about reviews, Brian? Yes, I happen to have a review that uh, a Hendrix, oh God, T Tavares, I think I said that right, uh, left us on iTunes. Uh, it's, each episode is refreshing, fun, and always full of useful information. I was even more impressed in how the Thunderheads ease experts into opening up and reveal useful tips and tricks. Well done. Thank you. Really appreciate that. It's Thanks, awesome. guys. Yeah, we had a great time at DevFest Florida 2019, and we actually yes. get to speak with one of the presenters at DevFest. We're talking with lead product developer and the accordion guy, Joey DeVilla. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Joey. Welcome, Joey. Hey there. Glad to be here. Yeah, we're so happy to have you, man. How you been? Ah, busy but good. Uh, getting caught up, uh, uh, getting caught up with a whole bunch of things at work. You know how it is, start of the year, and everybody's excited to get their projects uh, back up and running. So, trying to keep the customers happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It's a lot of. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, that's the old scenario of uh, we didn't get it released in December. We need to do it now. This yeah. first week of January, this <laughs> has to be done. <laughs> Yeah, everything yeah, has to be brushed. Yeah, and it's always tricky because you know that uh, that doldrum time between Christmas and New Year's. You don't, you never know what day it is. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Like I just go, uh, maybe it's Thursday. I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have meetings that I didn't realize that I had on my calendar that I made in like late December. I'm like, oh wait, what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so joey why don't we jump into the conversation before we get to the jupiter notebooks part of, and uh, get to know you a little bit better you are from you're not from toronto where were you born originally manila so yeah manila. i like to call myself the thriller from manila manila philippines nice okay and when did you come to toronto uh that would have been 75 so 75. i was still pretty uh yeah, still pretty young. And actually, prior to that, uh, my parents, they're both doctors. They wanted first world medical experience. So they did their internships oh. in the U.S. So two oh. years Boston, two years. So I grew up. Uh, yeah, I grew up a little bit there. And then we went back to the Philippines. And about three weeks after we returned, President Marcos declares martial law and the whole place goes banana republic really quickly. Oh, wow. But uh, yeah, luckily at the time, uh, Canada's doors were wide open. They're looking for um, they're looking for skilled people, and Toronto was an up and coming city, and uh, we ended up there. Oh wow, that's great! So, what kind of doctors are your parents? Okay, well, my late dad uh, was a gynecologist, OB gynecologist, and my mom is a cardiologist. In fact, for a while, she was chief of cardiology oh, at wow. St. Joe's Hospital in Toronto, and. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah, actually, and my sister 
is uh, the chief medical officer for health of the city of Toronto right now. So if you Man, get sick, she's knocking on your door. Joy, you completely did not follow the family business. <laughs> yes, I'm the yeah, black you were gonna sheep. Be yeah. I'm the black sheep. I went into computer. <laughs> I went into computers. Was your mom disappointed? <laughs> uh, no, not really. They they just said, you know what? As long as as long as you're professional, she's a retired tiger mom. Oh, okay, that's so, cool. Yeah, now now that she has grandkids, she's a total soft touch. And every now and again, I look at her spoiling them, and I'm just going, "Who are you? And what have you done with my mother?" <laughs> she got <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. the thing with grandkids. You don't have to actually raise them. You get to appreciate them, and you know and the kids do the work. Yeah, yeah them exactly. Them. And you don't get. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and you don't have to be the bad guy anymore. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah there you go. <laughs> so yeah. Then so then they're all still. I'm in... in... oh, sorry. Good. Uh, they're all still in Toronto, and I visit. Okay. Well, what brought you into Tampa? Uh oh. Uh, did, did, are, did we freeze for a minute? There we go. Uh, hey, look like back. there we he's go. Back. You're back. Yeah. yeah. So what brought you to Tampa? Um, I met my wife here. Actually, but, but, okay, uh, you I met was, your wife here. But what, how did you get here? How how I got here was I was a developer evangelist for Shopify at the time, and oh, Sh Shopify was sponsoring this cross uh, cross US bar camp tour so uh mm. the company with a bunch of other startups was sponsoring bar camps all over the u.s and one of the stops was uh here tampa so bar camp tampa 2011 and uh that's when i met uh that's when i met nitra oh, and that's so cool. uh, and uh about a month later she decided that you know she'd never despite the fact that she lived on the West Coast, really close to Canada, she never actually got the chance to come visit. So uh, yeah, I invited her. Uh, I said, look, come on over and I'll take you around. And by the way, uh, I, need a, I need a plus one for a wedding. You wanna come? <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out really well. Oh, wow, that's awesome, man. That's great. Yeah, Love and one story. of us had to move. One of us had to move and she doesn't like the cold. Ah, uh, so you guys have been in Florida for the whole time. Uh, well, no, we were doing long distance for a little bit, but I moved down here in 2014. Okay. Gotcha. You yeah. ever, you ever miss uh, the cold? Uh, you know what? Sometimes I do. Cause you know what? I, I, I used to like snowboarding. That was, that was a lot of fun, but you know what? Not driving in the snow, uh, not having to shovel snow, <laughs> uh, not having to salt the driveway. You know, there, there, there are certain advantages. I figure yeah, I've done my. I've done my cold time. I can do the tropical thing now. Yeah, most people I know from up north, it's always the uh, the seasons that they miss. They miss the uh, the change of the leaves and all, all of that, which I kind of get that. Yeah, uh, I, I guess so. But you know what? That's uh, you, you know we have we have seasons too. We just uh, wet, they're just different. They're not. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> yeah, there's hot. There's wet. There's Gasparilla. There's Guavuin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true there's peak florida man season yeah so we, we get them too they're just different yeah have you ever uh gone to the springs during that gone to like three dot uh th is it three three sisters springs up in, in like north northern florida north of clearwater no not yet that's amazing like there is hundreds of manatees that just come uh swimming in there i highly recommend uh anyone visiting or in florida check out all oh, the springs okay. there's so many there's well so i've so gone many. to the power plant with the man where the manatees hang out because the they like plant. the hot yeah, yeah the, they that. like the hot water output yeah so. yeah yeah oh that's so <laughs> funny <laughs> it's kind of funny so uh, you're currently a lead product manager at Source Toad. What 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 is Source Toad exactly? Okay, uh, Source Toad's a software development shop. It is ten years old now, and um, it was founded by it, it, it was founded among, by uh, its CEO and a few other people. But uh, Greg Greg Ross Hyphen Monroe is our CEO. I like pronouncing <laughs> the hyphen. It annoys. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Oh, and uh, well, they've been building custom software for people for a while. And uh, SourceNotes found a niche recently. Well, actually, over the past few years, and that is uh, a lucky break where uh, we've gotten a chance to develop software for cruise ships. Oh, cool. Like, like uh, what type of uh, software is it generally? 
Well, the big product that uh, Source Toad makes is called Cruise Director, and what it does is it take uh, it uh, helps you coordinate all the passenger facing technology systems on a ship, Ooh. usually made by different manufacturers, mm. all of which have different APIs that speak different gobbledygook, and there's no. Uh, and this is one control panel that lets you uh, that lets you control them all from one place. So that's oh, that's kind of a key awesome. thing. That, that's kind of a key thing. The other thing that uh, we've been doing is uh, the in-cabin entertainment systems. It's not a TV set anymore. It's a monitor hooked up to a set-top box, which is basically you know um, blasting out web pages, uh, but you can use it to view. Uh, watch movies and TV, listen to music, or also use the um, in-cabin remote control to do things like book excursions, uh, mm. book the spa, uh, make reservations on one of the shipboard restaurants, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, cruise ships are amazing. I like the stuff they have on them now. I'm, I've always been like, I'm not, I like, it's weird, I'm from Florida, but boats and me, I'm always like, eh, but like cruise, <laughs> but cruise ships are like a hotel. No, I, Open Is sea, it? open sea. Oh, open sea, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah, and they have been working. Uh, they've been working really hard. In fact, uh, the cruise industry has been growing quite a bit. They're expecting this year that thirty million people will take a cruise. Wow! And they've been working hard to make sure that anything you can do on a conventional land-based hotel, you should be able to do on a cruise ship. So, uh, some of the new cruise ships. I know one of them has laser tag. Uh, there is uh, there's a go kart track on one, like these cruise ships are so big. There are ice, there are ice rinks on right. uh, some cruise ships, and that is a minor technological miracle in itself because uh, the work that's involved in not making the ice on a ship crack as the ship rocks back and forth oh, apparently yeah. is severe, is a, a minor miracle of engineering. Yeah, I hadn't thought about something like that. That's that's an interesting interesting point. That would be kind of really difficult to do. Yeah, and there's a rumor that somebody wants to put a roller coaster on one. I don't know how that would work. What about uh, axe throwing? Yeah, <laughs> axe, throwing. axe throwing perfectly doable. <laughs> oh. You know what I really want to do on a cruise ship is take a boat on the boat. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. Take a boat. Yeah, it, it would Have be a, a little lake by on right the boat. And, yeah. Yeah. Go fishing. On the Go boat. fishing on the boat. I, on ice the boat. fishing. Yeah. Ice fishing. <laughs> ice fishing. I like that. But yeah, no, no, no. It's total pimp my ride. Hey, I heard you like boats, so we put a boat in your boat so you can boat while you boat. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's very meta. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and these things are getting huge now. Uh, the largest cruise ships are, we're talking uh, 250,000 tons. Oh, um, wow. 18 stories, uh, capable of holding 7,000 passengers. Uh, and then try and keep, uh, you know, they try and have one crew member for every three passengers. So it's it's a lot of people. Wow, yeah, a lot of people. That is a lot I'm of surprised, people. Yeah, they, I'm surprised no one's ever tried to convert one of those uh, giant uh, container ships into a cruise ship. Someone will. Someone yeah. uh, someone will actually. It'll be a hipster. It'll be a hipster cruise. <laughs> yeah, because of we'll all, all the container in, ships. Like you yeah, well, yeah, it'll be yeah, it'll oh, be yeah, it'll be containers and food trucks. An axe oh yeah, a, a food truck uh, boat. Oh, yeah. I'll start it, up idea. <laughs> yeah, it's happening. <laughs> hey, uh, to kind of get away from the the, the food truck thing, <laughs> sure, but, and I guess the boat thing. You know, uh, what I'm really interested in asking you, Joey, is how you got your start in technology. And I I know you told us the story about uh, working on a Commodore 64 at a, a local store, but um, or not working, but being a kid and going into the local store and playing around on their Commodore 64. But what got you interested in technology, uh, especially considering you had, uh, you know, both of your parents were doctors. Why, why, why did you get involved in uh, computers? Actually, what happened, uh, you know, a lot of credit goes to my mom. Uh, I needed to come up with a uh, science fair project uh, way back in grade school. And uh, it was mom who suggested computers. And then oh, I started okay. reading up on it. And then a friend and I put together, uh, uh, got some, uh, managed to get our hands on some relays and some LEDs. And we managed to put together simulations of uh, and, or, and not gates. 
and got pretty far with the science fair. And I was going, hey, this is pretty cool. I could, uh, I could do this. And then after that, started hanging around in computer stores that would tolerate me hanging around. Uh, yeah, and eventually, eventually got into a computer and uh, got into, a a and then got into computer science. So, what would so, you say uh, is your your first professional language that you started making money with? You know, like you got a job and you developed in that. Well, not Lingo. Job, but, yeah. No, first, uh, straight out of school, l uh -huh. Lingo, the coding language for Macromedia Director. Yeah, I, you can make DVDs oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because this would have been, this was, 19, uh, this was 1994. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was 1994. And um, actually at the time, uh, most of the opportunities in Toronto were in the insurance industry and banking, and that didn't seem like fun. And then I heard <laughs> that a company called Mackerel Interactive Media, a uh, multimedia, which um, they made interactive kiosks for museums and interesting cool apps like that in high mm. Oh. <laughs> he frozen for you, Frederick. Oh yeah. Uh, founded by a uh, founded by a bunch of friends who went to uh, the Ontario College of Art and Design together. So these are all art student, uh, art school students, uh, and they started this uh, CD. They started the CD ROM company, and they were beginning to get bigger and bigger clients, including um, Toyota. So this is pre web. So Toyota oh. used to have these ads when they were about to introduce their first made in North America truck called the Tacoma. They had these ads going, hey, you want to find out more about this truck? Um, uh, call this toll-free number right now and we will send you a CD-ROM or we'll send you two floppies if you don't have a CD-ROM drive and it'll explain this truck. And uh, they needed somebody to build this application. So, and, they were, and they were going, look, there's this object-oriented programming thing called Lingo that's in this tool called Macromedia Director that we've never used before. It can deploy to both. Uh, it can deploy to both uh, Macs and uh, Windows, and we need somebody to program it. I said, "Okay, yeah, I'm your guy." So I, I said, interviewed. That was really I, successful. I, it, it it went quite well, and uh, it was kind of funny the interview process. Uh, they they didn't ask me anything te uh, anything technical at all, aside from the fact that I graduated from computer science. Uh, the interview process with me was me going out with the founders to different bars on six different nights. And finally they said, okay, you can work for us. <laughs> so it was a four that. week, it was a four week period. And, uh, I think the one thing I presented to them was a resume that I wrote in hypercard because that was their, that was one of their preferred tools. So I go, was going, okay, here you go. Interactive multimedia resume, click, clicking buttons, playing sounds, moving pictures, that sort of thing. So yeah, awesome. yeah, I had to learn. Yeah, had to learn it in a hurry. Yeah, I remember director a lot. I remember uh, um, playing around with uh, doing animations in it. Stick figure animations were really big at the time, and it was super fun to make. And then making uh, making it so that it, you you put it on a DVD and then you could play it, and like you made the whole animation, and someone could just put it in their DVD player and uh, and watch it animate. And it was pretty awesome. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I missed put director a little bit. I put a, I remember I made a uh, pho photography portfolio and director, like when it was, mm. you know, back in the day, I think like 99, mm, yeah. I learned like a little bit and I grabbed somebody's template and kind of reverse engineer it. It was, it was fun. Hey, uh, yeah. uh, you know, one of the uh, th big things I, I would hate if we missed is I wanted to ask you about how you became the accordion guy. Like I, I we, we know that you got your start off by uh, playing some accordion with one of your buddies. You, you were looking for something for that that social hardware tool you, you played at the uh, the sanctuary vampire sex bar <laughs> back in yep. the day. That's Toronto's that's most what... notorious golf club. It's a Starbucks now. Starbucks, now. the saddest <laughs> Starbucks in Toronto, the mopiest Starbucks yeah. in Toronto. It sounds sad, but so how did you? Uh, it, you know, obviously, you start playing around, but now how you, you're in Tampa? How did you become the according guy? How did you bring that to Tampa? Oh, here? Well, uh, I mean, in the beginning when I met Anitra, I brought it to the bar camp, uh, the bar camp that it was at, and uh, played there. Played there. Oh, Usually what happens is... You serenaded her. You serenaded oh. That's what happened. Oh, yeah, that too, that. That, that, that too, at lunch. 
<laughs> um, but I, I, yeah, I brought I brought it around, and you know what? Anybody who wanted an opening number for their presentation, yeah, I said, look, I'll play for you. I'll give you an opening number. That kind of thing. And then uh, the other thing I do is I just take it around. Oftentimes, uh, when we when, when we go out, uh, go out to go out, especially you know when when uh, drinking's involved, uh, the accordion is a machine that can turn music into free beer really easily because it's always somebody's birthday. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> and you know you play Happy Birthday, and they go, "Oh, thanks, this is great." Here, have a drink. What are you drinking? You know that kind of thing. You know, make make, make somebody's night a little more surreal. Do you walk <laughs> around uh, in in your office with it on? Uh, not with it on, but I have it on standby. So since I have a new one, my old accordion is now just permanently at the office, just in case. <laughs> That's great. Do you have any? I have a couple uh... of accordions. Do you have any instances at your current job, or like any stories about uh, accordion moments? Let's see. Not, at the, not to put you on the spot. <laughs> at the current job, um, I know I brought it to the interview. I brought it to the interview. I played oh, it did? at the interview. Yeah, I did. Oh, right. I, I have. Well done. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, it's been, I, I've pretty much taken the accordion to every job interview I've been to ever since, uh, ever since taking up the accordion. Has it always been a positive, uh, positive thing, or has it ever been a case where they're kind of like, uh... N actually, no, it's never been negative. It's generally oh, either great. been neutral or po yeah, it's either generally been neutral or positive. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. So here's the here's a tip: learn to play the accordion. Yeah. Uh, you bring it into interviews. You will always get hired. Yeah, right? you're always right here. Always, mostly, yeah. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> there, were, there were a couple of times it didn't work out, but mostly. It, 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 I guess it, it depends on the song you play too, right? It's true. Uh, it's true. I guess. <laughs> I guess so. It also depends on how early in the morning it is. I guess there is a time of day that's a little too early for, for accordion or bagpipe. Yeah, I can't. I can't listen to Annie <laughs> Lennox on the accordion at like eight a.m. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there, 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 there's a time. I try to. I try to put it after ten. It's civilized. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be civil. I like that. Yeah. I yeah. What, what I uh, also really like uh, as, as we're uh, doing our in-depth research of you, Joy, is your website, your Global Global Nerdy. Uh, global absolutely. Nerdy. I love that. And it looks like, I, I don't know if you had any previous posts, but all I could find was up to August 2006, which that in and of itself is the earliest post I could find. Yeah. Is, that's, I mean, that's a long time to be doing your uh, your blog, your own blog. Um, I'm kind of uh, curious to hear a little bit about that, especially the fact that you've stuck with stuck with it. Looks like, uh, especially with all of the people who've not moved to like WordPress.com and Medium, and uh, what's kept you there, and a little bit of backstory. That would be great. Okay, well, uh, I got into I, I got into blogging because I kept uh, originally what I was doing was uh, I used to work with Corey Doctorow, one of the editors of Boing Boing. So I worked at his oh, startup yeah. during the dot com bubble because uh, he's from Toronto, and um, I actually met him through my first job at Mackerel, and oh, okay. uh, yeah, and we've stayed in we've stayed in touch uh, ever since. And uh, yeah, when he when he joined Boing Boing, I would keep throwing him suggestions all the time. Hey, write about this. Hey, write about that. And at one point, he said, "You know what? You really should write your um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really should start your own." And I think the other thing <laughs> that the other thing that helped was I was at uh, uh, the startup that I was working at. Um, they were beginning to phase out the original people and bring in new people, and I knew it was coming because my area of responsibility kept getting whittled down. So by by the very end, the one thing that I was in, responsible for coding was the about box the about on this box? desktop software. So yeah, just the about box. Oh, and I got to make the <laughs> installer. So, yeah, the about box and the installer, which meant that basically, you know, um, when I was at the office, I had to be there uh, X number of hours, but I was pretty much done within a half hour every day. So that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to start a, I'm going to start a blog. And actually, it's my personal blog. That's even older. That goes yeah. back to November 2001, the Adventures of Accordion Guy in the 21st Century. Uh, it was a, t it it was meant to be a temporary name. I was just going, oh, that's a really dumb name, but I'll change it later. 
<laughs> and you never do. <laughs> yeah, it's like all the people that that started their yeah Yahoo or Gmail address with like a funny guy sixty seven star nine seven at Gmail. Yeah. And, we, and right now, we, and at some point, you're like, oh, it's just temporary. I'll change it, and we all regret it. And keep oh it yeah, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. That first name is forever. So uh, yeah, it, I initially started it on Blogger. And uh, later on, when I was working as the uh, tech evangelist for Two Cows, they had their own blogging platform called Blogware. I moved it to that. And then eventually, uh, um, I moved it to a WordPress. Uh, yeah, I, I just moved it to a WordPress blog. So that, and I have uh, later so on in 2006. Are you on .com or are you uh, per on nope. self-hosted? Uh, self, well, just a hosted service. There's a great yeah, company okay. uh, called Press Harbor who... Uh, who are a two cows? Who are a two cows client? And um, I've stuck with them ever since. And yeah, they do WordPress hosting. They install it. All I have to do is, yeah, all I have to do is log into WordPress and write. They take oh. they they maintain the server. They set up they set up MySQL. They do all the they do all the hard work. I just do log you, in. I just log in and write. Do nice. you ever explore uh, Medium at all, or or and what's I'm curious what your opinion on, on that is as someone who's been blogging for so long. Um. I've looked at it. I do have a Medium account, but basically, I think uh, what I like about uh, what I liked about uh, have just having my own was that yeah, uh, just complete total control archives. Uh, I could throw up ads if I want to. Uh, it used to, the blog actually before Facebook and social media really exploded um, was actually a really good secondary source of income. My joke was. Back when I was working at Microsoft, I made about one to two Xboxes a month off ads. Uh, that's not the case anymore, but uh, yeah, it uh, for a while, it, yeah, for uh, back before the big Facebook explosion, yeah, uh, yeah, it was a great secondary income. Well, that's that's interesting. Um, I also love on it that you highlight like local. We were talking about before the show how you you talk local tech events you have a like weekly you post what's going on in Tampa and things that are going on that are interesting. I love that. Some of the stuff in there I was like, Oh, that like that. I like that. I like that. Um, how long have you been doing that? Uh, that I've maybe been doing about, uh, maybe a year and a half now. And that, you know what, that's a, that's a habit from my developer evangelism days when, uh, from but you Shopify from two cows from Microsoft, and a lot of it was just being in the habit of promoting local tech events. Uh, it was a big thing in Toronto at the time. Uh, Toronto uh, in the early 2000s was full of people who'd come back from the implosion of the dot-com bubble. So some of us were living, uh, myself included, we were living in San Francisco. Another friend was for a while working out of Austin, uh, you know, during the great big internet uh, during the great big internet boom and uh, all, all our companies had collapsed and we come back and we're just going, you know, we kind of miss that uh, <laughs> Silicon Valley or Austin scene. Let's see what we can do about, let's see what we can do about having it here. And uh, what, and one of the things that arose from it was this thing called demo camp. Demo camp mm -hmm. was where you could dem um, locals could in front of their peers demonstrate one of their projects no slides allowed. The only thing you were allowed to show on the big screen was your project in action. Hmm, you had okay. five minutes. You had five minutes to present, and then after that, 10 minutes of Q&A. So no fluff. Hmm. Get straight to the point. Show your show actual working stuff on the screen. I love and that. And then answer questions. And it ended up creating, uh, yeah, it, it ended up creating a really great scene. And the thing is, uh, in the Tampa Bay area and, sur and surrounding zone here in the other West Coast on Florida, in Florida, I'm seeing the same things coming together. So I'm just going, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's le let's give let's give the scene the scene a push. Let's give let's give meetups that otherwise might not be discovered some uh, you know some love and attention and make sure that people go to them. So I try and pick tech entrepreneurial and even general nerdy things. So that includes things like Toastmasters because everybody everybody can sharpen their presentation skills. And um, you know, uh, all, yeah, all the definitely. board game, all the board game gatherings as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, it, it's amazing how much Tampa really has grown even in the past like five to 10 years. It's, 
it's yeah. really starting to blossom a great food scene, great music, uh, tech is growing. Um, I started my own meetup, by the way, listeners, Figma, Tampa Figma group. Uh, it's all about Figma design. Uh, check, check it out. Google's actually I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, the last thing yeah. I want to talk about too is, uh, is that uh, the Vader photos. I love your Vader photos. I don't know uh, if it's you and if I don't know if you did it, but it's me. my favorite, my favorite one was I have altered the feature set. Pray I do not <laughs> alter it any further. I love that. I, I was looking through those and there's they're hilarious. There's a bit of rotting banana in one. That was really great. Uh, good, real, what when why did you start doing that? That's hilarious. Uh, that's because uh, one of my uh, fellow project managers brought it into the office and he said, Look, somebody gave this to my two year old kid, and it is a frightening present to give to it. <laughs> what? Two year old? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not for a two year old. And this thing, this thing's about three and a half feet tall. Like it, it's it, it's tall. Wow, and, that yeah, is pretty it's, big. Yeah, it, it's right. It, it's frightening to a kid, and he's going, "Yeah, I don't know what to do with it. Do you, you know, do you want it?" And I'm going, "Yeah, yeah." So uh, I was going, "Yeah, I'm going to put it in the office, right by the whiteboard, and occasionally just have Darth Vader uttering uh, uttering software development related quotes." So I need to actually uh, post a new one. But yeah, software Sith Lord is uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for people that I probably should explain a little better. Basically, what he does is he posts the Vader figure with something along with it. In this case, it was a, I believe it was a whiteboard behind it where he wrote that text. And there's other ones where he's holding a banana. There's just a, it's a whole series of them on his blog. Highly recommend checking them out. We'll, we'll link it. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. So, Joey, why don't we jump into Jupiter Notebooks? Uh, okay. You're gonna you're gonna provide yes. us a little demo, and I think before we jump into that, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, info what Jupiter Notebooks are? And and I believe they actually had a different name when they started out, right? Yeah, originally they were called IPython Notebooks. Yeah. So they were originally for uh, they were originally programmable only in Python, and uh, Jupiter mm. Notebooks are. Are, are a kind of document that lets you blend the normal stuff that you would expect to find it in a document, text, pictures, that sort of thing, the textual portion of a document, but you can also embed code and its output within the document. So um, if, you, if you've ever taken uh, physics or some math courses and you provide only the answer, you won't get full marks and the teacher or professor will go show your work. The uh, idea behind Jupyter Notebooks is to show your work. You can actually, you can actually go. Yes, uh, I believe that this is the case, and here's my proof, uh, and here's some code to that crunches through some of the data that I've collected that uh, provides proof of what I, uh, of what of the point that I'm trying to make, in my in my essay or in my document or in my report. And this so is all done in a web interface, right? Yes, that's the other thing. It's done in a, it, it's done in a web interface. It hasn't always, um, and it, this isn't the first thing to do it. Actually, Mathematica, Mathematica notebooks were the same thing. So basically, uh, you could you could present a the idea was that you could present a math or science paper in Mathematica and use Mathematica's uh, programming language to run some proofs through it too. The major difference is that Jupyter notebooks you know, is open source and runs on runs on commodity tools that you can get anywhere. It works in web pages. Um, it, it's powered. It, it's powered by Python. And uh, instead of using somebody's proprietary programming languages, there are forty or fifty programming languages su supported by Jupyter Notebooks. The preferred ones, the ones that seem to have most. Uh, most use the languages are actually the languages that make up the name Jupiter, J U P Y T E R, and that's Julia, Python, and R. So, three favorites of the data science community. Oh, and uh, yeah, the preferred one still is Python because I think it's just the one that's been longest in use, and the data, si data science people absolutely love it. And um, yeah, it evolved, it, and just because it evolved from IPython notebooks. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of Python. There's there's a lot of Python support everywhere. That's the other reason why it's a, it's quite popular these days, especially since data science, you know, is now one of the uh, sexiest jobs of the 21st century. I didn't say that. It was a data scientist who said that. But yeah, 
<laughs> I would I would tend to agree. I think it's yes. uh, probably a super exciting job, and there's a there's a lot to be uh, learned from all these new ways we could pull in this information. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's also partially because now we have so many data sources, like the phone, our own phones alone provide provide a lot of data and now sensor technology yeah between sensor technologies and uh, ubiquitous internet we now have we now have this giant pile of data that now we can sort through and crunch through and learn things from and uh, we're going to be we'll probably be spending the next 50 years figuring out how to how to swim through all this data and how to make sense of it <laughs> yeah and since it's on the web it's easy to consume Yes. How did you actually get into Jupyter Notebooks, though? Like, what what uh, led you down that path? Um, completely by accident. I think I stumbled into it on Hacker News, uh -huh. and in fact, actually, it was a it was a curmudgeon presentation from um, JupyterConf, which, which was an O'Reilly conference specifically about Jupyter Notebooks. And uh, oh, awesome. there's a data uh, yeah, there's a data scientist uh, named Joel Gruss who had this presentation called Why I Don't Like Notebooks, which was the uh, which was <laughs> yeah, it was sort of the uh, contrarian contrarian presentation at Jupiter at JupyterCon. But uh, and I was just going, oh that's interesting. I, I need to find out more about these notebooks. And as I was playing around with them Used to call her programming with enough programming with enough textual explanation behind it to really explain what you're doing, and I think it kind of follows the philosophy that uh, when you're writing code, you're really writing it for other programmers, and it just so happens that the compiler can also understand it. But you're really writing it for other people, not the machine. Nice. Well, so, why don't we go ahead and jump in? I'd love to love if we could uh, spin up a demo. Okay. Let's see now. I am trying to find the screen sharing control here. So it's going to be on the left left, si left side. Yeah, which, it's which, the which... second button down. You should see screen so share. The, ah, screen share. The green. Uh, okay. Yeah. And yes, I should screen one. And Brian and I will provide commentary for our audio listeners. There's a Vader okay. right now. <laughs> yes, <I'm> actually, <laughs> yes, this is uh, this is a Jupyter notebook that I'm using to demonstrate uh, a tool called Vader, and uh, they worked really hard to make this acronym work. It is short for Valence Valence Aware Dictionary and Sentiment Reasoner, and the idea is it's supposed to it's supposed to take short sentences and figure out. Uh, how much positive, negative, or neutral sentiment a sentence has. <laughs> it's often used for Twitter analysis or social media analysis. Yeah, there's a Vader picture that said free throat hugs, which free is throat funny. hugs. Yes. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Joey, if, if you don't mind, do you mind uh, kind of uh, making your screen a little bit bigger so we could uh, zoom in on there just a little bit more? Okay, uh, let's see now. Like going full full width and maybe just a, a zoom yeah, in I, I've, plus. Yeah, I've gone full width. Uh, oh, okay, great. Yeah. And there Let's we go. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. So, anyways, yeah, Vader. Uh, the idea is that uh, Vader you can feed uh, you can feed a bun uh, you can feed one or many sentences and it'll spit out some Python. It'll spit out a bunch of Python dictionaries that spell out uh, that spell out the sentiment of. Uh, <laughs> of the sentences you've given it. So I've got some examples here called positive sentiment. And as you can see, I've got, you know, I've got text here. I've got a heading. I've got a picture. I've got a sentence here that says, okay, let's run Vader on a list of positive sentences. But below that, I've got, um, instead of a uh, text or content cell, I've actually got a code cell here. So this is Python, uh, this is Python code. I can uh, you 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 can type you can type any Python in it, and then afterwards I hit Control Enter on this cell, and I get this output right here. So I've provided Vader with a bunch of sentences like Vader is smart, handsome, and funny, and then various versions where uh, I've capitalized some of the common word uh, some of the positive words, or I'm using exclamation marks, and those are boosters. 
And what it does is it spits out this output going, okay, what is the negative sentiment in the sentence? What is the neutral sentiment in the sentence? Uh, what's the positive sentiment? And then what's the total? Uh, the idea is that it can, uh, I'm using, I'm using Jupyter Notebooks to, uh, to show how Vader can be used. And what and, I really like what I'm seeing so far for all of you listeners is very much, it's almost like you're in a Google Doc or something and you're working through it and you can, there's images in there and he has like Python code that he, it's very much in line and it, it just looks very uh, friendly. It's not the scary like IDE like interface right at the moment. Yeah. And in fact, let me uh, try running something right now. So I'm going to change the code right here. So I'm gonna change one of the sa sample sentences to "Thunder Nerds Rule." Actually, yeah, let's like it that. recognizes the words "rule." That sounds and popular. Roll, oh, you know what I need to do is I need to re let me uh, let me re-execute this uh, this code here. So you have to execute these cells in order. So any any cell you execute uh, remains in memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute this cell, which actually defines the method that I defined. Oh, okay. Analyze sentences, so control enter on that. That's been run. Now, if I run this cell again with Thunder, uh, where I've defined one of the positive sentences as Thunder Nerds rule, let me highlight that cell, control enter, Thunder Nerds rule. Oh, wow, it says 1.0, it's completely neutral. <laughs> so it doesn't recognize rule as a, okay, but you know what, if I change Come on, Jupiter Thunder Nerds. Thunder Nerds are awesome. How about that? There we go. Now, there we go. Neutral, 0.376. Positive sentiment, 0.624. Compound oh, yeah. sentiment, yeah. On a scale of 0 to 1, where 0 is jaw rule and 1 is puppies, 0. 0.7163. <laughs> what, yeah, what does the compound uh, mean exactly within your, your whole al algorithm here? Uh, funny you should ask. In fact, I don't even remember, but all I have to do is scroll back up to the documentation I wrote. <laughs> what does Vader's yeah. output look like? And that's that's the beauty of literate programming is you can answer questions like that. It's right there. Compound, normalized composite of negative, neutral, and positive sentiment on a scale of minus one, which is jaw rule, and plus one, which is puppies. <laughs> By the way, that's my that's my new thing. On a scale of jaw rule to puppies, where does this lie? <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's very clear for people to understand. So that, I like that a lot. De definitely. And again, for our audio listeners, it's really nice because, again, like a Google Doc, he scrolled up from the code and there was documentation just in line within this notebook, which, again, yeah. really awesome. Yeah. It, j just think of Google Docs, but with you could actually run code in one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, the, uh, yeah, so basically, you know how people say, you know, you should put documentation in your code. This is the other way around, actually. You should put code in your documentation. <laughs> yeah. <that's>, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, uh, in, on this Vader page, and I've got, it, it's on my GitHub, and you can, yes, this is me, yeah, mixing it up. So this is uh, the example I've got here, dark, sort of a, Half Darth, Darth Vader, half Hello Kitty in a mini skirt outfit Darth here. Kitty. Darth That's Kitty, adorable. and this is where, oh, yeah, this is, and I'm using this yeah. photo to explain. Let's ex let's examine complex sentences. <laughs> you know that may have a mix of positive and negative se uh, sentiment. Sure, you that know, picture so was all positive like, to me though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all good, but yeah. So that's my, yeah, that's my graphic for, yeah, let's mix things up. But once again, you know, a little bit of humor, a little bit of documentation, a little bit of code, all in one package. Yeah, I love this. Have you used this document to uh, explain Jupyter Notebooks to other people or uh, say for a team like, hey, th let's let's jump in. Let me give you a little intro on how to do this. <laughs> Uh, only, you know what, only for DevFest Florida so far and for, <laughs> but I'm planning to grow a bunch of Jupyter documents to explain, you know, to explain different uses. So mm. for instance, uh, one, let me call up another one here. Montre uh, and some of the, uh, yeah, this is a slightly, uh, this is my, my slightly more, uh, more visually entertaining spin on somebody else's Jupyter document, and it's on Montreal crime data analysis. Uh, the city of Montreal, by the way, a lot of fun. It's kind of like Europe, but much closer. 
It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a great party city. Uh, here's a photo of uh, the Montreal police for three years were protesting their pay by wearing non-standard pants as part of their uniform, and that's what the, this photo is from. But what this does is this draws and this takes uh, this takes Montreal crime data as published by their police and uh, walks you through turning it, uh, crunching that data and turning it into an interactive map showing where the crimes are. So oh, what wow. I explain here is that here's a bunch of setup code. So it's a bunch of Python code. This still is a big Python script. It just happens mm -hmm. to have pictures and uh, pictures and text explaining things. And then I go, OK, let's get the data. Or in French, obtenons les données. You have to. You have to take at least a little French when you uh, grow up in Canada. It's it's mandatory till ninth grade, at the very least. And I go, okay, let's look at the data. So we import the data, and I go, let's print it out. Uh, and you know, using Python data tools, you get these beautifully formatted tables without having to do any work at all. And then I go, look, I don't understand <laughs> French. Let's I, translate. I like, well, I like that you say without doing any work, but you, you created the whole setup and functions and everything for us. <laughs> but the pretty graph, uh, I mean, sorry, the pretty table, I didn't have to do any work. All I had to do was type in, uh, use, the, use the data frame head command. Yeah, there's some work. Yeah, there's a little work in there. I know, I know. And what, for our audio <laughs> listeners, he showed, uh, it's very nice. There was a bunch of imagery uh, showing like the intro to some documentation, and then he defined a bunch of, I believe, functions, it looks like. Not very familiar yeah. with Python. Whole bun um, uh, a whole bunch of utility functions for plotting, and it will pay off in just a moment. But most of it is just to plot the map. Most of it, I'm talking about, you know, uh, how many crimes are in this data set? We can find out really quickly. So I use this, you know, this print command, and I just go, give me, give me the dimensions of this data set. What are the what are, what are the data types of the columns? And notice that the names are in French. So I'm just going to go. Exactly. Okay, let, yeah. So we translate. Uh, we translate into we translate from English uh, French into English. It's kind of funny because wow. the uh, French the Quebec French word for burglary is actually introduction. <laughs> you are introducing yourself into somebody's house against uh -huh. their will. But yes, that is the term, introduction. So introduction, burglary. Interesting. Yeah. You know, oh, and then they, they actually they actually separate between vehicle contents or parts theft and stealing the entire vehicle. Hmm. All right. You know, it takes and, a car stereo. Yeah. It happens. Let me ask you just to just to be clear too. Like you could pull in data from other sources, right? You're not. This isn't just like local data. You're you're literally pulling from somewhere, right? You can uh, you can pull from somewhere. Uh, just because I was uh, dealing with the possibility of spotty conference Wi-Fi, I pulled okay. in this data from a local CSV file. But mm -hmm. not. But this is just a Python script. Nothing stops you from hitting an API and grabbing the data that way. Gotcha. It's just so that it, it, you have. It, it, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying that I, I was just preparing myself against uh, Phil, the Dark Prince of Demos, who will oh. always mess with, who will always Phil. mess with the conference Wi-Fi. But uh, <laughs> he here's the uh, here's the here's the eventual output. So it's on. I can map. zoom in. We're seeing a map right now and showing a bunch of uh, dots and they're color coded. Dots that expand, yeah. but I can, I can zoom locations. in to city blocks and click on oh, each crime. of these map points oh. and identify each of these crimes or again zoom out and see where see where the clusters are oh, where all, all these them. introductions are yeah it's, uh, it's yeah we're all the map. yeah it's a map where you can zoom in and you click on it and you go in and you can see where the burglaries were where how many uh, yeah how many there were that, that's that's awesome uh, what does uh jupiter uh, so far we've seen a lot of stuff and it seems very uh you know Python, you define what what does Jupiter provide that that makes it great for this type of stuff? Actually, the uh, the thing that Jupiter provides is the framework that lets you mix Python uh, that mix lets you mix blocks that are Python code and blocks that are just markdown. So if I were to click, uh, if I double click on uh, the text here, for instance, I'll, all right, let, this is a text block. Let, OK, all right, let's go map some crime. I double click on it, and suddenly it turns into Markdown, and I can edit it. Wow, that's wow. nice. That's so cool. I can just type in here, hey, a new bullet point. 
And then, uh, like executing code, I'm, I'm just going to click on the cell and hit Control Enter. And instead of executing code, it just renders the markdown. So uh, mm -hmm. the real power still is in um, is still in just plain old Python programming and importing these data science libraries. Uh, it's just that now you have this nice setup where you can mix where you can mix text, uh, you know, textual explanations, and then intersperse it with your code and put it on a web page and share it via GitHub and let other people execute this code. And if they want to, um, they can go and play around with your code. You can even write interactive code so that you can create simulations where people can go, what if we entered these values instead? Or you use the, sli use the slider to enter that value. Uh, the idea is that you can re it allows people to explore the data, but you can also provide with the text you know, your own interpretation of it. So it's fantastic for it's fantastic for papers. It, it would probably be great for journalism, great for tutorials, great for writing up anything where, where you know you you might be able to where you might need more than just plain text. You might want to have some actual code running to to prove things. But my my last question about this subject, Joey, is if if you are somebody that knows Python, uh, is it easy to get into this? Or if you're somebody that doesn't know Python, is it easy to get into this? Yeah, in both cases, I would say yeah. yes, it's easy to get into it. The easiest way to get Jupyter Notebooks is to actually install the Anaconda distro of Python. So um, it's it's a specific distribution of Python. It uh, it comes with a lot. It comes with a lot of stuff, and one of the things is Jupyter Notebooks. In fact, once you install Anaconda Python. And especially if you're on Mac and Windows, they're really easy installers for it. But once you do that, all you need to do to fire up a Jupyter Notebook is drop into the command line and type in Jupyter space Notebook and hit enter. And it will fire up a local, a local web server on uh, port 8888 and start serving Jupyter Notebook pages. And then creating a new Jupyter Notebook page uh, is a matter of uh, going file new notebook and selecting the language you want to you, you want the code to be supported in so in this case file new note uh, as i'm showing on the screen file new notebook python 3 and boom and wow. then yeah print yeah. hello I imagine, world yeah i imagine the real benefit of how how it's easier to learn than a lot of you know, perhaps even a lot of other things is just like uh, i guess services like codepen and and just been and everything where you can just look at it and this is even better in a lot of ways because it's there's ten, it looks like it's very documentation uh focused people will likely write things because it's inherently built into the tool yeah absolutely uh, absolutely because uh yeah it's supposed to be like um you know what it is is uh it's kind of a continuation of a really old scientific tradition uh, you know, uh, that goes back to at least uh, Da Vinci. I'm, I'm going to pull up an example from my old, uh, yeah, fr from my uh, from my presentation at DevFest. And I'm just going, yeah, it's part of the ongoing ongoing quest to explain complex things. And, uh, you know, we used to have the notebooks of scientists, mathematicians, and mad madmen. So Ooh, yeah. people like Da Vinci, you know, who'd write stuff in their notes. But not only would they write text, they would do... They would do what was sort of uh, revolutionary at the time, which would be include their formulas, uh, diagrams, and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, we're seeing a picture uh, of uh, uh, was it Stephen Wolf? What was is this? Yeah, Vinci's Stephen or? Wolfram talking about comp uh, what he called computational essays. So the idea behind oh. Mathematica notebooks and Jupyter notebooks was to create computational essays. So essays that also mm. had. Uh, originally would just have plain static formulas, but uh, in the world of Mathematica and now Jupyter Notebooks, the actual executing code that would do that would actually function and do things. I could I could definitely say if I, learning this though with uh, with that script, <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's a, and the script is like a very like cursive. Calligraphy style. I can't imagine yeah. reading code. Or try even reading. reading, it. reading read, yeah, try reading, reading code <laughs> that way. Yeah, for yeah. our audio listeners, I I highly suggest yeah. going back and 
watching yeah. this episode and taking a look through through what <laughs> Joey then, showed us today. If for nothing else, but for the wonderful Vader memes that are throughout the uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, my, I have uh, one. My last uh, question. I, it's uh, called a spotlight question. And, or, and no, just Joey, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna jump yeah, out of this and we'll go back. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're running short on time, so we're moving forward. Um, okay, let me stop screen sharing. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no, no, we can make it very, very, because uh, it's a very personal type question. This one tends to sure. be. Sure. Uh, and it's a group question. It's meant to look more at you as like a, kind of a person and get to know you a little bit more. We've learned a lot about you already. I mean, you're, you're a very open person. You're awesome, Joe. But this, uh, this question, uh, I'll go first. Frederick will answer next, maybe. Sometimes he doesn't answer. But uh, it's uh, what, do you use, what do you use to cope? when you're feeling uncomfortable like what is your what's your thing um i mean mine uh, mine is a difficult i don't really uh when i'm uncomfortable i tend to just be quiet um getting away from the situation or being distracted or um like listening to something like rain for instance i i, I always have a i have a really great rain app on my phone that if i'm anxious or having difficulties, I'll listen to it and it calms me down. That's that's generally how I tend to cope with when I'm feeling uncomfortable with things. Frederick? Uh, I guess uncomfortable, like uh, just like in general, like- In general, yeah. yeah in general. Um, okay, sure. Yeah, I guess if I'm uncomfortable or like I need some inspiration or something like that, I'll I'll get out my phone and I'll, I'll look at my family. I'll, I'll look at my wife and my son and look at pictures and it makes me really happy and I feel good again. Aw. <laughs> I, I take two approaches. Uh, one is, uh, you know, if possible, uh, I, I run a couple of ideas by uh, my wife, Anitra. She's always great for that. Uh, the other thing is I, rem I go back to this philosophy I came up with when I was an underage drinking teenager. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's easier in Canada when the drinking age is 19. It's, it's easier to pretend to be 19 for a young person to pretend to be 19 than 21. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, if you if you want a wonderfully wasted youth, grow up in Canada. <laughs> good, good sell <laughs> for actually, Canada. I like that. Yeah, there are. In fact, there are uh, there are two provinces where the drinking age is eighteen, Alberta uh -huh. and Quebec. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, my friend Henry and I came up with this um, theory that in the um, uh, if there are multiverse, if there's an infinite number of multiverses. There is, there has to exist one multiverse where your life is not your own, but a television show, in which case you should live for maximum ratings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Oh, and, I, uh, I like that in the, in the realm, in the current uh, era of reality TV shows. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Real Housewives, please no. And uh, yeah, know. I take comfort in that, and I'm just going, okay, what would the what would the audience like? <laughs> well, because it could be this one. Yeah, exactly. You know what, sure. what what's going to get me the next? What, what's going to get me another season on Netflix? What should I do? That and that's exactly. How I, I mean, we could all just be a TV show for some uh, some culture somewhere out there. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's uh, true. The other the other thing I can count on is the fact that uh, you know what I, I've pro. Uh, I can say, you know what, maybe, maybe I have seen worse. I, uh, you know, this is not, I, I can often tell myself, you know what, this isn't the most embarrassing thing I've done. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I, 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 I have a, re I have a reasonable diary of indignities. That I <laughs> yeah. Uh, no one should be embarrassed. Every, everyone has tripped and fallen over uh, that uh, cough table. Me a lot more than others probably, but you do trip a lot. All, you know, we're all awkward people. We all make mistakes, and you know we're all there for each other. And there's always someone out there there for you. Everyone should know that. Um, it's been great talking with you, Joey. Um, and do you have any final words, of uh, wisdom, or thoughts for our listeners? Uh, you know what? I should probably sing that final thought. Oh um, yeah, you yeah, certainly should. Yeah. yeah. Do it on the accordion. I have it here. In fact, this is a new accordion. I uh, I picked this up at the one in. Uh, there is a dedicated accordion store in the Tampa Bay area. It's in Clearwater. I highly recommend it. John Gaunt. Uh, 
is the proprietor. He is a wonderful man. He has been very helpful. I'm very glad. Uh, I'm very glad that he is in business. I am amazed that he is in business. I don't know how many accordions you can sell in the Tampa Bay area, <laughs> but I'm a customer. I guess enough. Yeah, I guess enough. Uh, but his his store is only open Monday to Friday, ten to five. Oh wow! I was just going. I can't imagine many stores being able to thrive on those hours. Yeah, maybe it's all online business. I, I hope so, because he's got some really fancy accordions there, too. In fact, uh, the Roland synth accordion, someday when I have $6,000 burning a hole in my pocket, I'm going to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> this is some advice I used to give when I worked at Microsoft. Oompa loompa doopity doo. I would wait for service pack two. If you don't, your screen might turn blue. Oompa loompa. Service pack two. <laughs> nice. Love it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Ah, uh, any, uh, well, Joey, thank you really so much for being on the show. Super appreciate it. And, um, uh, is there uh, any way that you want people to get a hold of you, your Twitter website, whatnot? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see now. Personal site, joeydevilla.com. Uh, technology site, globalnerdy.com. Uh, I'm Accordion Guy on Twitter. I also tweet on behalf of Source Toad. So uh, go check... Uh, Go check out, go check that out as well. And uh, you know what? If you're in the Tampa Bay area or surrounding areas, go event, go attend some tech events. Let's make this, you know, let's make this its own. Uh, let's make Tampa Bay a great place to for techies to and nerds and entrepreneurs to live, work, and play. And uh, come meet me out there. If you hear an accordion out there, it's probably me. Come say hi. <laughs> it's the accordion guy. Yeah. <laughs> And listen to the Thunder Nerds. They're a key part. They're a key part of the local tech scene. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. Yeah. Go to YouTube slash uh, C slash Thunder Nerds. We're on thundernerds.io and uh, help us out on Pantheon. And with that being said, Joey, do you want to play us out? Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so much joey thank you very joey much yeah. appreciate it thanks everybody for watching take yeah. care thank you joey